They are you are. talking to like greater angels though? All of them. Like the things that people draw with like spinning eyes. <laughs> that's the sh you're talking to. Not and talking I'm, to all of them. I'm talking to the things that like Mary Lou down at the Episcopalian church talks to when she rubs her, her like freaking cross necklace. Hi, <laughs> I'm Em. And I'm Liv and we're your meta sidekicks. So today we're doing angels. And first I just need to tell you about the disclaimer. We are psychic mediums. If that's not your jam, this is the wrong video for you. And because I'm saying this, we are going to approach this in a different way of like, I don't know, Christian religion. So again, this is your time to click off. Or continue to watch and leave us comments that you don't like us below <laughs> because that's fine too. If you guys are into this jam of psychic mediumness, we like to do these things that started with haunted locations where one of us knows nothing and the other one knows everything and we're like, okay, one, two, three. Before I tell you everything about this that I just learned and crammed into my brain hole, what do you see? Cause you're a psychic medium. And we're like, <laughs> Blue. That's what we're gonna do. And in this case, I know nothing about the angels. I'm also not religious at all. Um, I'm spiritual, so do with that what you will. And M went to Catholic school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so an angel is believed to be a spiritual being that is the attendant, agent, servant, messenger of God. Now, which god that is, this is gonna piss off a lot of people because I'm saying which god and it's usually associated to the Christian god. But since we are spiritualists, we also believe in a source creator type god. So that's my question for you, which god? I mean, we live in the US, respectively. So for us, everything's very Christian or Catholic. So I feel like just culturally as how I've grown up in this society, I've always thought that the Christian God is the same as source. And that's kind of just always been my understanding, even though I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm Christian or Catholic or any other sort of Western religion. Yeah, I think that Christian religion has created a deity that is the Christian God. Because really? Yes. <laughs> No, I never other religions did that too. It, well, no, that's true, but I never I, never I would have never thought of them as a a deity. Yes. <laughs> I always just think that the they one are referring to source. Yes. Yeah. So I never put human things in it, which is why they created a god. So, yeah, I think angels are things or spiritual beings that serve source. I think the Christian God is source, so I didn't know. I didn't, I, on it, you're blowing my mind. I didn't think that people had like a Christian God. I thought everyone was just like, my well, God is God and there's only one God. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, there's only one source and that's God. But like, I didn't think that they were like, my one, like it would be like Apalaki type thing. But you're telling me that it is and it's absolutely making they don't me wanna oh, like throw up my nose. fat, but that's what happened. I've never had it presented to me that way. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. But yeah, the reason why I was asking you that is I was wondering if angels was like a dragon type deal where we have created angels or if we are just aware of angels because they have presented themselves to us. I feel like the thing in the Bible as how I feel with a lot of other things that are in the Bible of when they get pointedly prejudiced towards one thing or another that is the human ego of yeah. someone mm -hmm. that is translating what they've heard from source, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Because at the end of the day, we're still egotistical monkey brains. And what they're telling me is angels are, they're telling me that they've been the same thing in essence for all of creation because angels are the things that are the closest to human gods. So like for the people specifically, because we talk about how there's a lot of like, other gods, like there's a god for the people, but from the sun. Angels are for people and that is it. And they are for the human aspects of people, not the natural aspects, not the other type of like geological, biological, astrological aspects. They are the gods or the deities for the people, which is why people are so like weird about them. 
they're telling me that like when we first started talking to people there was this one guy and he's the one that like fubered everything up about like you can't do this and you can't do that because he was so in awe of us that like we talked to him because we knew that he would get stuff out but we didn't know like how like crazy he would be about it does that make sense yes and no i've done research on them so it is you are invalidating the research that i've done on them okay <laughs> they're not just for men maybe the angels that you are talking to are just for men mm -hmm. they're telling me that they deal with the physical he okay so like fairies deal with the physical aspects of the world yeah there you go <laughs> they're saying we're angels we deal with the human physical mm -hmm. aspects of the world no that's what they're saying <laughs> there's like this one who is like a light blue okay and there's another one that's like a light green okay and they're just they're both like male presenting and they're the ones telling me this stuff so so they have described to me as a psychic medium that they're like the white blood cells of the body because i associate everything with we are part of sources physical body or whatever. So I don't believe that they are deities. I believe they have a different job than a deity does. I believe they are- Are you are... talking to like greater angels though? All of them. <sighs> what? I have no idea. I think I'm talking to the human angels and you're talking to something different. <laughs> well, I'm talking to all of them. It might make sense once I explain things to you. <laughs> okay, I'm freaked out. So there are nine ranks of angels and they are split into three triads and the first triad or the third triad, the lowest triad are the ones that are associated with human beings. It's like a food pyramid. So that's what I'm thinking you're talking to or the yes. ones that are associated with us. Yes. But there are more associated with higher. Yes. And that's what you told me. Like the things that people draw with like spinning eyes, that's the <laughs> you're talking to no i'm talking I'm, to all of them i'm talking to the things that like mary lou down at the episcopalian church talks to when she rubs her her like freaking cross necklace uh-huh yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> i didn't know we were going that big angels Makes topic me nervous so the first rank of angels is angels <laughs> and that's where olivia's at so the first one is angels angels are associated directly to the material world. They are the beings that help us. And in the rank angels, that's where a lot of the guardian angels come into play. They are directly protecting us as human beings. The next rank of angels are the archangels and those are the leader angels. They are directly assigned to carry out God's will for human beings. They are the ones that like, they're telling me things about it that they weren't telling me before. I'm glad I could be your battery. They're like telling me about soul contracts. They're like the ones that mm -hmm. are like in charge of the soul contracts, but like not in a spirit guide way. Yeah, they're the ones that tell your guardian angels to say, hey, you just got into a car crash that you weren't supposed to and you should look like a human accordion but that's not okay. So then people are like, I feel like somebody pulled me out of my car and all I had was a band-aid. Yeah, so they govern like what is allowed within the, like, the soul contracts. Cause they're showing me like things within like a court type thing, but I don't know courts well enough to know who all the people are called. <laughs> oh, they're showing me things happen really fast and they're the ones that go, God, Larry, <laughs> you had this. Larry. You did this so many times and you choose to this up and they're like jeez and christ they go like this and then everything goes backwards and the person's like literally <laughs> fine even though they should look like a fly splattered on that the is window. hilarious that's why when people are like was it my guardian angel it's like well yes but the archangel told the guardian angel to do that because you can't do that and neither can your spirit guides and can nobody else because they're like with archangels these are where we know which angels like we have given names to specific angels which are Michael, Gabriel, and also Lucifer, because he was also an archangel. There's only three of them? Those are the three that we know. There are other ones. Okay, because I was gonna say- There are other fallen say... ones that I know of. There's also Raphael. Those are the ones that I could find. When you tell me that, I think about a Ninja Turtle eating pizza. 
So the next rank of angels is principalities and they directly govern like large communities. So state, cities, states, kingdoms, countries, that is what they govern. They govern large groups of people. So that's why other groups of humankind can have other ideas of got it, of spirituality. What do you mean? They're the ones that say, this group of people can have this idea of source. This ah. group of people can have this idea of source. That's why there's lines. There's so many, it's like fault lines, mm -hmm. spiritual fault lines. Now we're going to move to the next triad of the angels. This is the second tier. The first rank of angels within the second triad is the powers. They fight against like evil darkness. They help keep order of the natural worlds. Can you please put in Mermaid Man going, <laughs> this triad of angels is more relating to um, like the balance or the difference between our physical realm and the spiritual realm. So these three next ranks, starting with powers, is very much they are governing our interaction with the spirit world. Okay, so the next rank of angels is the virtues. The virtues directly are in charge of maintaining nature itself. So they are the ones that allow like miracles to happen for the deserving. They are directly governing of the movement within nature in regards to like the planets, the elements, and the seasons. They are directly in charge of like things that are possible within our natural realm. And then the last rank of angels within the second triad are the dominions. And the dominions maintain the balance between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. So they are the ones that are like the head honchos within this triad of maintaining this balance between physical and spiritual. Would that be like this um, graveyard gatekeeper? Would he work for the dominions? What do you mean? Like when oh. we went to the cemetery. You're talking about, are they working for the Dominions? Mm hmm Or would he be a Dominion? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think he's a Dominion. Well, he's like a guard between the physical and the spiritual. Oh, trees. Oh, trees do that? Trees are portals, right? And they don't have permanence. Even though they're sessile creatures, they are both alive and spiritual at the same time. God is hilarious. Say that again. You said that they're the boundary between the physical and yeah. the, and they make sure that everything that should be happening happens correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Without trees, our entire world would cease to exist. Like vegetation, I don't yeah. think that you would be able to produce enough oxygen if trees weren't there, if we just had like grass and shrubs and like little plants. But when we talk to trees, Trees are alive. However, they're also like, I know what you did last Sunday <laughs> and you like- But so do all of the plants. Why is it just the trees? I don't know. I feel like the trees are the highest of the plants. Got you. But it would be funny that you would think that, people would think that a second tier triad angel wouldn't be a physical being. They're saying they are what they are. Yeah. I wanna to touch a tree that's a dominion. Sorry. Well, aren't they all dominions, according to you? <laughs> well, you don't know? I don't know. I'm I, confused. This is blowing my mind. I'm trying to rationalize it, and it's not helping. They're kind of telling me that trees themselves are not dominions. It's the spirit that goes through a tree, but at the same time, it's not always fair. That's why I was like, I want to talk to a tree that's a dominion, because they're like, technically they all are, but they're not because there's one that does the other ones. It's weird. Because trees are portals. They're telling me things about my research. Uh, okay. So let's move on to the third triad of angels. This is the higher tier of the angels and are dealing with, directly dealing with God itself. So they are more on the spiritual side of handling things. The first rank within the last tier are the thrones. And the thrones are directly correlated to the knowledge of God. They, have, they are known for their strong minds and I directly correlated I wrote down that they are associated with judgment and the way that I view judgment is like judgment day they are the ones that are 
like governing not necessarily good and evil but governing everything in itself in like a knowledge base things they like show me people that are like the nerds of the angels the like the ones behind the computers the next rank of angels are the cherubs and like actual cherubs i don't know what you think a cherub is it makes me think about the night at the museum when the Jonas Brothers did the voices of the cherubs that are flying around and Amelia Earhart's like, we have to save everything. Cause you used to tell me that you would send me ch pink cherubs. I did? Yeah. When the f did I say that? In school. <laughs> I have no idea what past Olivia was on. And I also don't remember that. College mm -hmm. was a fever dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the next rank of the angels is the cherubim and they, they contemplate God's providence. But what's interesting, because we were talking about the minions being trees, they are assigned to guard very special things like the tree of life. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that I said something now. Yeah, because that's what they're telling me. The way us humans view things are interesting because we view them in a physical way. This tree of life is help them helping me explain what they do and what they are. So trees are very important. Us as humans understand that. So that's why we have the tree of life. The tree of life is not necessarily an actual tree, but at the same time, it's the thing that gives us life. Spirit also is really funny and they like to with you in regards to i they're telling me that it's funny because we're talking about things that are spiritual beings non-physical things but what's the best place to hide a non-physical thing in something physical yeah <laughs> which is why trees always perplex us because i don't understand how something that literally hasn't moved since its existence started knows things about other things usually only non-physical beings such as like your soul leaves your body and you're dead and now i'm talking to you you are a non-physical being so now you're able to understand these things but trees are also alive and they're physical yet they know everything it's like they're dead but they're not dead at the same time and why do they have all of this information yeah the universe is funny <laughs> and then the last and highest rank of angels are the seraphims and the seraphim, they are the direct attendants to God itself. But they, those are the ones that have six wings and the eyeballs flowing all around. <laughs> have you ever talked to a seraphim? Do they feel like a supernova? Um, I view them as sound, so okay. I hear them. Wait, like... wait, wait. The sound that you're hearing, does it sound like if you were putting your ear next to a jet engine or on a smaller scale, like turning on a blowtorch. <laughs> well, that times infinity and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Okay, as long as we're hearing the same thing. It's like a sonic boom. Yeah, I hear like Because you literally only hear it right before, like they have to slow down in order for you to hear it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes me feel like a supernova. I don't yeah. think a supernova is a collapsing star because they're not saying it's things that go inwards, it's things that go outwards. Hang on, let me see. They're saying a supernova is a powerful and luminous stellar explosion. This transient astronomical event occurs during the last evolutionary stages of a massive star or when a white dwarf is triggered into runaway nuclear fission. Okay, so this is weird because when you said serifs, I was like, okay, well, I love science and I very much believe that my style of mediumship and the things or ways in which I talk to certain things and stuff like that is very unique to me because I very like, I like to approach things from like a naturalist's sort of idea, mm -hmm. like outdoorsy, hippie. I really like to use the word naturalist because those are people that are like outdoor scientists. Okay. And when you said serifs, I was like, okay, well, if I view God or source as literally so much energy coming together that you exploded and made physicality in our understanding itself, then how is it that, like, what is it that the serifs do? Because if they're like the right hand people or things to God, then I don't understand. And they literally showed me like energy coming together to create the Big Bang. Because they are the hands of God. 
makes sense. Mm -hmm. And now they're telling me supernovas, which are things that explode and create so much energy. It's ridiculous. That's what they told me. Uh huh. Is like planets coming together, like supernovas, to create what needed to happen for Big Bang. But then what is God? Is God just like, God is all of it. <laughs> we are God. Well, I get that, but like, how is it that if the seraphs are the things that helped create God, I thought God would have to be the things to, okay, separation's an illusion, stop talking, I get it, leave me alone. Continue. <laughs> They're like, stop trying to think about it with your dumb monkey brain. Separation's an illusion, leave it at that. One of the lower ones is explaining it to me. They're like, you know when you're in a company and like you know you have somebody that runs the company and everyone else is in the company too and they know who runs the company but everything works so well that it doesn't matter who runs the company it's just that this is the company and this is what we do and we work so well synonymously together that it doesn't matter who's in charge oh because you view source as the source of all energy which is why you're viewing sarah seraphins as things that the source it. came from I'm thinking Source had to create them, but they're like, no, we created Source, which is why I'm having like an existential crisis because on this they camera. Are source. Yes, because separation's an illusion. But my <laughs> monkey brain has a hard time comprehending that, so they're trying to explain it to me in a business manner. Oh God. <laughs> Communications. That's weird. <laughs> they're like, that's why you don't have companies like that on Earth, because it's really, really hard. People have egos, but we don't have egos. It doesn't matter who started what and what went first. It's just that we all work together to create one giant thing, and that one giant thing did create us. However, so separation's an illusion, and you're stupid. They're like the movement of energy throughout Source, which is why it created... Well, it's not creating Source, it's just changing Source, because it's the mo you can't create energy. Yeah, I saw them as energy and then I was like, that's weird. And then they're like, they're I'm the a supernova. They're the movement source. Absolutely. And the movement of source creates other things. Yes. So the next topic I wanted to talk about was guardian angels because we get asked about guardian angels so often. So like I said earlier, guardian angels fall under the tier of angels. They are the lowest tier. So what is a guardian angel to you? To me? Yes, you tell people this a lot, so... The floor is yours. To me, guardian angels are the ones that um, can change things in your life. But they're usually like... They're the ones person. underneath the people that can change the things in your life. I don't know what that means. So it, if you're allowed to have like a, la a lot past loved one that like looks over you. Yeah. They can't interfere with things. However, they're able to alert other higher angels to the that you're f***ing up on <laughs> and be like, hey, I don't think this is supposed to happen. And if it's not supposed to happen, Michael's going to be like, fixed it, <laughs> next. But it's like, if you were to like go backwards, so like imagine someone moonwalking and they weren't supposed to moonwalk, but they're about to moonwalk into a bus and their guardian angel who's like their great grandmother is like, oh my God, Jimmy, no, you learned how to moonwalk, but this isn't the place. And he's like, Archangel Michael, please help me. And he's like, gosh darn it. And then instead of moonwalking backwards or moonwalking, he just starts walking forwards in the other direction. And it's like, what? He almost should have gotten hit by a bus, but he didn't. He started walking forwards. Moonwalking in front of a bus. Well, when you moonwalk, you go backwards. But <laughs> I got you. Michael was like, fixed forwards. it. <laughs> so you That's... perceive guardian angels as our loved ones that get to interfere then? They can be loved ones. Um, oh, so they can be anyone. Well, the thing is, is what is someone's perception of a loved one? I feel like if I say that, they're going to think someone that they were close okay, to. Okay, but are they human beings? Yes. Like human souls that intervene? Yes. Because most, okay, Christian religion does not believe that angels and human beings are the same thing. Yeah, but then that gets, so uh, before, I, before I go on to what I was just going to say, I yeah. was going to say that Sometimes your guardian, guardian angels can be lost loved ones that you don't know or aren't that close to. Cause like, they're just supposed to have some sort of whatever. Like, okay, they're separate from your spirit guides. Guardian angels are separate from your spirit guides. So your spirit guides are spiritual beings that you, and don't even bring up the paranormal story as a medium. I'm not even ready to talk about that. They're not the same thing as your spirit guides. So they can work with your spirit guides, but they're not the same. So like for my mom's instance, if you want to listen to our last podcast or our Mother's Day episode or podcast, she talks about how she thinks her father is 
someone that helps her because she's adopted. She's never met her father ever. I think for her, her father is a guardian angel, but he is separate from her spirit guides. So that's how I would view- Does that normally happen? Where you don't like have as firm a connection with whoever the guardian angel is? Well, it's all like perspective though. I feel like my mom's always had a really good connection with her mother or her father, like, but she doesn't, not physically, not in the way well, that yeah. people would understand it. Do you have a guardian angel? Me? Yeah. I have no idea. Cause we literally went to one medium once and she was like, I don't see anybody around you. And all she saw were my spirit guides. And that really just kind of makes me sad. There's a woman with you. <laughs> because I feel like my grandfather is a guardian angel. Oh yeah, I was around. just going to say that. Because he passed when I was like 11. So I don't know him very well because I've only known him when I was a child. <laughs> Yeah. And it's freaking me out because last, like, when we were recording our one Paranormal Stories of a Medium, I thought he was a spirit guide, but he's not. He's a guardian angel. Because I just think it's weird that he's following me around. That's also why I can't talk to him as much. That's why I talk to your other grand. Oh, got it. Just letting you know. Because <laughs> he's going to <laughs> make mm -hmm. things happen. Interesting. <laughs> And that's not for me to know about unless he needs to tell me about it, but that's his thing to do is if something if hits the fan, he needs to be like, hey, Archangel, can you fix this? But he's also separate from your spirit guides. Well, yeah. So I forgot what I was just gonna say now. Oh, we were talking about it. Um, you said Christians don't believe or some of them allegedly don't believe that humans angels. can be angels. Yeah. Well, my mom thinks that her friend who was a medium it has lived so many lives and has raised their spiritual consciousness high enough that now they are going to be a higher being spiritually, AKA what we would equate to, or my mom equates to for her own personal beliefs as an angel, whether that be a guardian angel or something else. Yeah. But she's dealing with knowledge and stuff like that. So I think she would still be a part of like the first triad or the third one. I don't know how you label them. The one at the, the bottom. The lowest one. The breadsticks. Because <laughs> technically it goes three, two, one, and the one is the highest. Mm. But I understand what you mean. Yeah, the I feel tier. like she's a part of the higher tier of the third one or the lowest Yeah, because she would still have to the second. raise her vibration high enough to get any higher. She can't just go from the lowest triad and up to the top. Oh, and I've literally had readings where I, I have talked to somebody and they have a, it's weird. A past life as an angel. It's a past <laughs> life, current life. Because like, it's always that. Because technically they're still an angel, but up since souls are one and the well, same. Technically I'm still a medieval boy. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so past life, past yes. life relationship. But I literally have talked to a client and they have a past life, current life as an angel. Yeah, but why? Because they were given the opportunity to be an angel. However, in their work of being an angel, because morals aren't the same spiritually as they are physically. More spiritually in the sense of morals, she was getting a little too big for her britches. So the like higher tier spiritual beings were like, you need to get knocked down a couple pegs, go take part of yourself, like your leg and incarnate that thing into a human. Like your leg. Yeah. So, to so was she a higher tier angel? Like was she in the middle tier? He's saying me that he was number two of the third tier. Of the third tier, lowest tier? Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the breadsticks. So he's an archangel. Yes. He, he gives me Lucifer vibes, but he's not. Hmm. So, Makes sense. Yeah. Just cheeky as shit. And they're like, you need to to stop. Speaking cheeky. of Lucifer, <laughs> if you guys want to hear about specific angels stories, make sure to tune into our podcast because I have talked about four angels, two of which are, I don't know, light being angels and two of the other ones are dark being or fallen angels. So who's excited? Also, if you want more content like this, and you've gotten to this point in the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, check out these other videos. Maybe become a patron, like all of these other people. We'll see you guys in the next one. Also, disclaimer to the disclaimer, the number, the number two to the number one disclaimer. I'm sorry, I sweared a lot. <laughs> That's sorry. what you're apologizing for. Lord.
Lord, I apologize. Also, sorry, Dad. God. I know, I swear a lot. It's just how I talk. I like how that's what you're concerned about. Maybe it's because you're not religious. But literally starting out this video being like, which God is the right God within Catholicism? is gonna make people so mad. No, I just really like listening to other people's religions because they all are like same, same, but different to me. So I don't yeah. really have like prejudice against any religion unless it goes against my human morals, which is like being mean. Yeah. Hurting things. So mm -hmm. that's about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty normal in the realm of spirituality, I would say. Mm -hmm. A naturalist, a hippie, I'm a naturalist spiritualist. Find me with the dandelions <laughs> talking to the trees. And we're your meta sidekicks! <laughs> She's like, I'm not gonna say it. Because yeah, every time she down. says say the oath, is it the oath? I, I said say it. Ah. Uh, last it. time and you uh, assumed things. Say it. Say it. I'm a vampire.